Let's take a look at some ideas to help you with uh, finger picking songs whilst you're trying to sing them at the same time, if that's something that you have problems with. The first thing to say is that this video is an extension of the previous one I did where we looked at strumming songs and singing them. Everything that applied to that video also applies to this one. So all the exercise ideas will also work with small adaptations for fingering instead of picking instead of strumming. Uh, the same kind of ideas to build up slowly will work. So go back and revisit that video if you've forgotten some of the tips in there. But let's use this one to concentrate exclusively on the additional things that you can bear in mind when you're trying to finger pick. Now rhythm is the key here too. I said in the last video that you must be able to tap your foot at all times and feel the pulse internally of the music. Crucial, crucial to being able to sing and play anything. And the same is true here. Now, in strumming, it's the down strums that are marking out the beat. And finger picking, it's usually the thumb that can help you to mark out the pulse. But you must always be able to feel where that pulse is. Let's take a very simple pattern like uh, on a G chord. Six, three, two, one, two, three, two, three. One and two and three and four and. Now you're feeling it come back to the one of every bar with the thumb. One, 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 one. Make sure that initially you can definitely tap your foot on the ones and then expand it to one, two, three, four. Tap, 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 tap. Feeling the pulse continues to be essential to being able to sing. The reason for that, of course, is that you must have the picking pattern whilst you're singing on automatic pilot. And the only way it can be on automatic pilot is if you have the pulse also just automatically, metronomically moving inside you. OK, now again, the secret, if you have trouble with this, the secret to getting this down is to start simple and get more complex. I'm going to use examples from uh, free lessons on Jerry's Guitar Bar, or in fact this first one is a lesson that I put down a long time ago. The lesson is, uh, is showing its age now, but it's the simplest kind of picking pattern, so it's a very good place to start. It's not on the, the website, but there's a YouTube video of me teaching. We're going to be friends by the White Stripes. The picking pattern, again, it's a G chord. I'm actually, they, they do it, or he does it, with no capo. I can't sing it in that key, so I'm just going to pop a capo on fret 4 so I can sing it more easily, but we'll play the same chord shapes. I've got a G chord here, and I'm going to pick a pattern that goes 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 2, 6, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let me just play the first line for you, the first kind of line of the song to give you an idea of what it is if you don't know it. Fall is here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes, walk in blues, climb the fence, books and pens, I can tell that we are gonna be friends. It's as simple as that, which makes it a very good one to start with as we practice trying to sing over that accompaniment. You've got three chords. On a G chord, we're going to play six, two, six, three, six, two, six, three. And you'll do that twice. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So here the thumb is absolutely marking every beat. You should find that your thumb's going down as your foot is tapping. Get both those things working. When we go to a C chord, we'll play five, two, five, three, five, two, five, three. Then we'll go back to G and we'll play the G pattern one time. Six, two, six, three, six, two, six, three. Let's start with those four bars. So it's G, G, C, G.
Now, if you feel brave and you are doing well with the strumming and singing, you might like to try putting the vocal immediately over the top of that. Fall is here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes, walk in blues, climb the fence, books and pens. Now, to be able to do that, you've got to have that pattern on automatic pilot. So if you're finding that difficult, then first of all, go back and practice the guitar part until you really feel it's automatic. And then like with strumming and singing, you can try just putting the first word of each bar into the vocal. Fall back brand climb. If you can do that, then you're at least aware of where the bars are coming and, and, and the shape in which the words are going across the accompaniment pattern. Another thing you can try at this point if you're finding it difficult is to put the original track on. You'll need to play that without a capo. Just in, in, uh, in first position G chord shapes. Uh, and see if you can play the accompaniment whilst he is singing the song. That also helps to reinforce in your head how the lyric goes across the accompaniment pattern. And every now and again, uh, check back in with yourself and try and sing through that four bar sequence. Fall is here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes, walk in blues, climb the fence, books and pens. Then we're going to tackle the second half, the second four bars. I can tell that we are going to be friends. I can tell that we are going to be friends. It's a six bar phrase, but it doesn't really matter. But pick it up from this D chord where you'll play four, one, four, two. Now he then leaves the ring finger in place and comes to the fifth string third fret for a kind of C chord, but the pattern is just five, two, five, two. So you've gone on D, four, one, four, two, and then on C, five, two, five, two, or this funny kind of C to G, normal pattern, same as before. Now the D to C again. And then he plays two bars of the G, normal pattern. He does actually very slightly vary that pattern, but for the purposes of trying to use this as an exercise for singing, I want to keep the pattern exactly the same. Here it is again with the vocal. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. So go through the same series of exercises that we talked about before, if that's difficult. And when you get it, try and put the two segments together. And finally, as we said in the strumming and singing video, try recording yourself. If you think you've got it right, but you're not quite sure, record yourself, listen back, see how it sounds, see if you can tap your foot to your own playing and feel the pulse moving through the music. What we'll do at this point is move to a piece that's just a little bit more complex in the picking pattern. Not much, but a little bit. We're going to take a look at Leonard Cohen's Bird on a Wire. Uh, if you want the tabs and everything, you can download it free from the website. What I'm going to do here is very slightly simplify the pattern, not much. This is basically what he plays, and we'll just do the first four bars to start with. So a quick run through of what that is, in case you haven't got the tab in front of you. On an A chord, it's five, four, three, four, three, four, and it's three beats to the bar, one and two and three and. Play that twice, then go to an E chord and play six, four, three, four, three, four, and you'll repeat that. So it's A, A, E, E. Now here's how it sounds when we get the vocal over those first four bars. Like a bird. Like a... 
Now again, to move things along a little bit here, I won't break down exactly what steps to go through. The steps will be the same as they were for the White Stripes tune. So if you have trouble with getting that vocal going immediately, go through all the steps that we've talked about to get familiar with it, including the ones we talked about in the strumming and singing video. Again, the key is the pulse and that the finger pattern is, uh, you have it down cold so that it's on autopilot. That's why I'm picking repetitive patterns right now. Repetitive patterns are the easiest ones to practice this on because once you've got the feeling of the pattern going bass 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, bass 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, and then just the bass changes, you can get that pattern on autopilot because the fingers aren't looking to, to do anything different. So you're aiming to get that to the point of Like a bird On a wire Like a We'll do four more bars of this one and then we'll put this one to one side. The next two, four bars go A of the two bars again as we'll, we'll play it as before. He changes it, but we'll play it as before. And then to D where you can play four, three, two, three, two, three and repeat that. Like a drunk on a midnight choir I have. So the eight bars that we've been looking at like a bird on a wire, like a drunk in a midnight choir. I have. All right, now up to now we've concentrated on repetitive patterns, patterns that just where the fingers just repeat what they're doing. And that's a really good place to start because, as I said earlier, once your fingers are used to that uh, repeating pattern, uh, they, you can get it on autopilot and just concentrate on the singing, which is what you have to do. We'll continue with that idea on a slightly more complex pattern, but again, a repeating pattern. Leaving on a Jet Plane by John Denver is another one on the website, one of the free songs, and it sets up a repeating pattern that goes like this throughout the song. D chord that comes later on but essentially most of the song is moving between these two chords it's a G chord a normal G chord and then you leave the the sixth and first strings in place and add the fourth string second fret and second string first fret the chord of C over G and the pattern that he sets up is a Travis picking pattern six two four three six two four three and exactly the same on the C over G chord Notice that the key here is that you're tapping your foot on the thumb notes. Tap, 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 feeling one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Play just the pattern without singing until you can tap your foot without even thinking about it and that pattern is instinctive. You're not thinking anymore about what your fingers are doing, they're doing it automatically. Don't try and sing until you can do that. And if you're not familiar with Travis picking, you might want to concentrate for a while on uh, the first two songs because Travis picking in itself is a difficult enough technique. If you are familiar with Travis picking, that won't be a very difficult pattern to get down. Now, having gone through the pattern there, actually, I'm now going to pop a capo up at about fret four, again, just for the purposes of my vocal. John Denver's too high for me. Cool. Pattern's the same, of course, just chords are the same, just in a different position. Here's how the vocal will go over that sequence played twice. All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. Now the rhythm of the singing is different from the rhythm of the playing. As we said in the strumming video, the brain cannot split itself and concentrate on both those things at the same time. That's the reason that the pattern must be automatic. If you find that you can get the pattern automatic, but as soon as you start to sing, the pattern breaks down, it just means that you need to practice it more and start by practicing it more slowly. Bags up. Go. 
If that is still causing it to break down, go back to the tips from the strumming video where we can start by humming. You're asking your brain to do one less thing by not requiring it to think of the lyrics. And if that's a bit too much, then just uh, as we did in the strumming video, la or hum an outline of the melody. La, 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 la. And just gradually add the complexity of all the syllables back in. Take as long as you need to on it. There's no, there's no rush for this. Just drop it as slow as you need to you will find that it clicks at a certain point, and it, at that point will be where the pattern is so automatic that you're really only thinking about the vocal over the top of it. Now, don't move past any of those songs until you've got them down, because I'm deliberately getting more complex as we go through each of the songs. So take it a step at a time. This one, certainly, the next one we're gonna have a look at is a step up in complexity from the John Denver pattern. We're going to play a simplified version of Jim Croce's Operator. Again, it's on the website as a free song, but we're going to simplify the pattern to this. Then I am going to come back later and I'm going to add in the extra little bits because now we're going to look at what, what a guitar is doing when they're able to add a little extra twiddly bits in whilst they appear to be singing the song as well. But for now, we'll keep it simple. If you are following on the tab, I'm doing a simplified version of the line from bar five where the vocal comes in. On a G chord, I'm going to play six, three, two, and one, then four, three, two, and one, and then four, three. Now, this is Jim Croce's favorite accompaniment and many other guitarists use it too. I like to think of it as the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two pattern. It's actually counting one and two and three and four and, but you feel the thumb going on one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So the thumb is going irregularly here. Before you even begin to start singing, just play that G pattern and get familiar with tapping your foot because the taps are not always going to fall on thumb notes. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Might be more difficult than it sounds, and if it is, slow it down. Tap, 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 tap. The pulse never changes from a regular one, two, three, four on almost any accompaniment pattern but sometimes the accompaniment is playing across that pulse, and it is here. The chords we're gonna play are G, B minor where the pattern's the same, but the bass is now the fifth string. C, which on Jim's version is different, but will play same accompaniment, but the fifth string bass. And back to G. This is what it's going to sound like when you get the vocal down. Operator, could you help me place this call? Okay, now again, I'm going to skip through the steps. The steps will be the same ones you did for Leaving on a Jet Plane and the other songs. Take it step by step. Don't rush it. If you lose it, go back and follow the earlier steps, slow it down, all the things we talked about. What I do want to do with Operator is get a bit more into what he actually plays because he begins to change the pattern on that, it starts on that C chord. What he actually plays is this. Operator, would you help me place this call? So we've got two things happening here. The first two bars are the same as before. C, he doesn't continue that pattern. What he plays is a pinch of five and one. Then he gets, he's going to play a descending phrase. So it's five and uh, C chord, five and one. Then you want the fifth string, second fret, second string, third fret, five and two. 
then just the second string at the first fret, five and two, and then just the sixth string at the third fret, and if you want, you can also play the second string open. Now the key to that is the rhythm. It's just one, two, three, four. That's how he's able to change the pattern and sing over the top of it because it's not a complex rhythm. One, two, three, four, next bar. And the, and the, the words actually fit over it in quite a regular pattern. Help me place this. Just watch out for place. This is the kind of thing singers are doing a lot. Help is on the beat, me is on the beat, but place is in between that one and that one. Help me place this. And the reason, at the risk of repeating myself, the reason we're able to do that is because we're feeling the pulse of the one, two, three, four, so that we can sing a different rhythm across that pulse and still play the regular beat here because we're feeling the metronome inside us driving that two, three, four beat. Now before I get into the complex thing that he does in the next bar, I'll put those three bars back together. Operator, could you help me place this? Now he does this. Call. Now, I could break down what he's playing there, maybe I will in a moment, but what I want to emphasize about this is notice that this is the most complex part of the accompaniment so far. Where does he put it? He puts it at the end of the line during a segment in which he's not singing. The singing just overlaps the beginning of that bar, but he doesn't sing anything else. He can hold that note. Help me place this call. He just sings call and he can... Now he can concentrate on what he's playing because he's not singing anymore. So now this, this more complex thing doesn't have to be on autopilot in the same way that the accompaniment did while you were singing because you're not singing anymore. And you'll notice time and time again when you do finger pick songs and try to sing them that the cool little tricks that they're playing are coming in between sung segments. And the reason is, of course, that their brains can switch from the concentrating on the vocal to concentrating on the guitar part. Operator, could you help me place this call? And when he goes back to singing again, he's going to go back to the standard pattern. You see the number on the matchbook is old and faded. That's the same pattern again, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. He's singing, so he goes back to a regular pattern. So just to sum up these segments, the, 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 well, I won't go back over all the exercises again, it's crucial that you've absorbed that procedure by which to step up towards the full vocal. But the one thing that I want you to take out of this is that if, you st if at any point you can't sing over the top of what you're playing, it's because you haven't internalized the pattern and there will be, or usually there will be some kind of pattern. If there isn't, Create one for yourself. You don't have to play. If he seems to be playing something slightly irregular, or she, uh, then find a pattern using the same chord shapes that is regular to you. You don't need to, in accompaniments, as long as you're holding down the correct chord, you don't need to be picking note for note what they're picking while they're singing. You're going to find the key elements of the song will be in the introduction and in the sections where they're not singing. Okay, so finding a regular pattern can be very helpful for this, and most singers, as we've seen in the songs we've done so far, will do that. Okay, because of the complexity of finger-picking, this video has gone on probably longer than I intended already. I'm going to finish it with a little look at Fire and Rain, another free one on the website. And again, I'm going to use this to demonstrate something we showed in Operator, which is how often a singer-guitarist will play a repeating pattern while he's singing and put the little licks in in between the sung lines. Fire and Rain is a perfect example by James Taylor of that. When he's singing, he's going to be playing something as simple as, for example, this. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. 
standard, you notice the same thing that we saw on operator. As soon as it gets complex, it's, it's at the end of the line. While he's singing, it's not complex. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. And James Taylor is the best example of this because all these classic little James Taylor licks that you hear everywhere in his music, that kind of thing, are always being done at the end of lines, in between vocal lines. This one, if you're interested in having a little look at that, is a little mini A shape up here. You've got a two string bar at the fifth fret. He's, he capos at three, two string bar at the fifth fret, and this, the third string at the sixth fret. And he just plays bass note, in this case five, three, one, two. Then bring that shape down to frets three and four and play six, three, one, two. Don't worry about what chord that is right now. And, and the pattern is, the rhythm is just one and two and three and four and. And your foot's going tap, 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 tap. Regular pattern. To a normal D chord, bass note moves to four, four, three, one, two. And then A will include the lick. Because he's finished singing. Just yesterday morning, they let me know. that what you're doing is moving mentally between the singing and the guitar part concentrating on the on the vocal here vocal vocal guitar and back to the vocal as I begin to sing again Suzanne the plans they may put an end to you and again uh, he's playing simple patterns again pick 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 regular rhythmic patterns just out of the chord shapes while he's singing so I hope that somewhere in there that gave you some helpful tips if you're still struggling with singing and finger picking. It is one of the things that many people find very difficult. It will always succumb if you go through the steps that we talked about. Take it as slowly as you need to get that pulse internalized. Can't emphasize that enough. That is the key to everything. And with that, I will see you next time.